friends today now we will discuss about the gastrulation in ampioxus in ampioxus gastrulation is started when there are about 800 cells in the embryo that is between 9th and the 10th cleavage it involves two basic types of morphogenetic movements of the embryonic cells number 1 is the epiboly and number 2 is the emboli what will happen in the epiboli we will discuss both the processes go on side by side inside the embryo one is the epiboli it is the expansion of ectodermal cells of the embryo second is the emboli in the emboli the blastoderm at the vegetal pole that is endodermal plate becomes flat and subsequently bends into invagination thus the embryo instead of spherical becomes converted into a cup shaped structure having a large cavity the archenteron which opening outside by the wide blastopore the cup has double walls an external and internal epidermis both of which are continuous with each other over the rim of the cup shaped embryo in this embryo the prospective mesoderm lies in the ventral lip of blastopore and the prospective notochord lies in the dorsal lip of blastopore in the diagram you can easily see the blastula and its change in polarity during the gastrulation in the diagram 1 you are seeing you are able to see the circular structure of late blastula which shows segmentation that is uh, segmentation cavity that is a uh, blastocele is now started its work on the upper side you will, you will see the animal pole and the, on the basal side that is a vegetal pole in the diagram b micromeres the small cells uh, small cells you are able to see and at the base there are macromeres the cells which are having a large shape then in the diagram c you will see the anterior side the posterior side inside this the blastocele cavity is taking its shape in the fourth diagram that is d diagram you are clearly seen the process of archenteron formation started at, on the right side and in the middle there is a blastocele so this is about the ampioxus blastula and its changes in polarity during the gastrulation as the endodermal plate moves inwards dorsal notochordal cells involute move inward along with the endoderm due to which the prospect notochordal cells come to lie beneath the prospective neural ectoderm. Similarly, the prospective mesoderm in the ventral lip of blastopore also moves inward and side by side its lateral horns converge towards the dorsal side of embryo so that they come to lie on both the sides of the presumptive notochord. Now the embryo is also elongates in anteroposterior direction as shown in the figure. And in this elongation, all the prospective cells take part. The blastopore subsequently narrows due to the contraction of the rim of blastopore. The blastopore now leads into a newly formed cavity that is the archenteron as shown in the figure. So this is how the archenteron process get elongates and form. Thus, the two layer gastrula is formed in which the outer layer of cells become ciliated. But it is enclosed in a vitelline membrane. Growth continues and the gastrula becomes further elongated anteroposteriorly. Growth of the dorsal leaf reduces the blastopore and shifts it from a nearly dorsal to the posterior position. Gastrula has a outer layer of ciliated ectoderm cells in which mid dorsally are cells of neural plate and ventrolaterally are cells of epidermal ectoderm. The inner cells of gastrula have a middle dorsal strip of notochord cells on the two sides of which the mesoderm cells and the lateral and ventral inner cells are endoderm. 
In this diagram, you can easily see the gastrula with the remnants of the blastocil still present at the blastopores. In the diagram A, you are seeing ectoderm, mesen mesenteron or mesentoderm, you can say. Future posterior dorsal region is clearly seen and in the diagram B, it takes a shape of C in which in the middle easily you can observe the arc interval process is getting formed. Future posterior dorsal region and the opening we call it as a blastopore which will in future will form the leap of blastopore. So this is about the gastrula with a remnant of blastocyl still present at the blastopore. Now what is the fate of germ cells? The ectoderm will give rise to epidermis nervous system and the receptors. Endoderm will form the elementary canal and midgut diverticulum. The mesoderm, third layer, will form some muscles, connective tissue and germ cells. Now, in future, the formation of notochord will take place. The cells which were invaginated from the dorsal leaf of blastopore lie in the mid-dorsal of the archenteron as, as shown in the figure. They evaginate dorsally at the anterior end of the embryo and become separated from the endoderm. This evagination of notochordal material also continues caudally and ultimately forms a solid cylindrical cord of cells which is called as notochord. It lies below the neural tube and between the mesodermal somites. It extends in the entire length of the body. Its anterior extension into the rostrum takes place a later. A notochordal sheath of fibrous connective tissue will eventually surround the notochord. Then after the no formation of notochord, simultaneously there will be a formation of neural tube in this particular uh, differentiation of the cells. If you see the diagram, diagrammatic representation, we have, uh, I have posted here the transverse section through the amphioxus embryo in which you are seeing A, B diagram. It is of gastrula. C to F is the post gastrulation stage. We will discuss one by one in this diagram. The figure A and B clearly shows the blastula having neural plate at the above surface. For the 12 mark question, students, you have to write this particular you have to draw this particular diagram for the gastrulation. So this is most important diagram in, in the marking sense of view. It is clearly shown in the figure the undifferentiated mesoderm, the archenteron, the ectoderm, the endoderm and above surface there is a neural fold and neural plate is also seen in the blastula diagram. Let early blastula and late blastula figure A and B. From figure C, the gastrulation process has been started. You are clearly uh, observe, you, you may observe clearly that the neural fold is getting closed. In the diagram D, you will see archenteric or an enterocelic pouch for, which get formed due to the mesodermal layer. And at the center, there is an enteron or gut. Figure E clearly shows the visualizations of formation of different type of siloms. Mesodermal somites is clearly seen. Notochord is also get uh, formation of notochord is also seen in the diagram F. Neurocil is also there and silom is also there. Now this is completely growing animal at the stage of gastrula. Now next step will be the development of mesodermal layers and the silom formation. So in this what will happen the diagram I, I am showing to you a next diagram that is gastrula of amphioxus in the figure B. The ectoderm has grown over the blastopore in the formation of neurocil. The passage between the neurocil and archenteron is called a neuro, neuroenteric canal. So here the embryo is, is it getting its shape towards the formation of animal. Now we will see the significance of this particular study. Dear friends, dear students, you have to write the conclusion of 
any answer in the last paragraph so you have to, you must have to write the significance of this particular topic the study of the development of branchiostoma is significant from the following point of views number 1 the study of embryology that is development provides an insight into the evolutionary history of chordates the position and the way of formation of blastopore in developing embryos divide bilaterally symmetrical animal into two groups that is prostomia where blastopore marks the area of mouth and deuterostomia where blastopore marks the anus the branchiostoma falls in the la latter together with other chordates and echinodaurates number 3 the way of formation of coelom in branchiostoma brings it closer to echinodermates based on the fate of blastopore manner of the mesoderm formation muscle chemistry and similarity in the sera proteins it is believed that the coelenterates onwards two stocks of invertebrates evolved so the amphioxus is supposed to be a representative of primitive chordate and links chordates with invertebrates and shows the evolutionary steps followed by the vertebrates so this is all about the significance of the study of branchiostoma that is amphioxus so here we have completed the process of blastulation gastrulation up to the three germinal layer formation with its significance in case of branchiostoma or amphioxus thank you